Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Petr Kuchinka and I work as a cardiologist in General Faculty Hospital in Prague in the Czech Republic. It's a great honor for me to participate in Heart Muscle Talks and I would like to share with you our data regarding five-year follow-up of patients with recent onset unexplained dilated cardiomyopathy undergoing endomyocardial biopsy. Dilated cardiomyopathy is traditionally defined by dilatation and systolic dysfunction of the left ventricle, not explained by abnormal loading or coronary artery disease. Moreover, uh, since 2016, we have a new subtype of DCM uh, called hypokinetic non-dilated cardiomyopathy, which is de defined by normal size of, of the left ventricle and decrease of ejection fraction below 45. For purpose of our study, I will focus on the traditional type of DCM. DCM has a wide spectrum of etiologies. In patients with recent onset unexplained DCM, we are mainly focusing on the detection of presence or absence of myocardial inflammation. And for that reason, we usually use endomyocardial biopsy. In our study, we prospectively included 133 consecutive patients coming to our department because of evaluation of recent onset unexplained DCM. In all subjects, we performed endomyocardial biopsy. Uh, aims of our study were to evaluate the presence of viral agents as well as borrelia burgdorferi in myocardium to analyze the presence of myocardial inflammation in endomyocardial biopsy, to evaluate the changes of left ventricle ejection fraction in the five-year long follow-up, and also to assess mortality in same time period. Our inclusion criteria consisted of history of DCM or heart failure shorter than one year, and also left ventricle ejection fraction below 40%, persisting after at least one week of conventional heart failure therapy. Our exclusion criteria listed on this slide, we excluded patients with moderate to severe primary bowel disease, subjects with hemodynamically significant congenital heart disease, subjects with AFib or flutter with ventricular rate above 100, subjects with uncorrected metabolic or endocrine disorders, patients with history of alcohol or drug abuse, subjects with history or, uh, of cardiotoxic oncologic treatment, and also individuals with similar history of DCM. This majority of the study population had advanced symptoms of heart failure as assessed by New York Heart Association classes three or four. All subjects had dilated left ventricle and either moderate to severe systolic dysfunction as assessed by ejection fraction. The severe systolic dysfunction of the left ventricle was present in two thirds of the study cohort. Only in 12% of the study population we observed dilatation of the right, right ventricle, and approximately in one third of the study population, we notice decrease in right ventricle systolic performance as evaluated by uh, value of TAPSI. Here are shown the data regarding findings in a dendrobiocal biopsy. Dallas criteria were positive only in three subjects, and in all these three subjects, it was only positive for borderline myocarditis. Immunohistochemist criteria were fulfilled in 17% of the patients and used the criteria recommended by EC Working Group on, of Myocardial and Pericardial Diseases published in 2013. So to have the criteria positive, we needed to have at least 14 leukocytes per square millimeters and at least seven T lymphocytes sites per square millimeter. PCR focus on viruses was positive in approximately one half of study population. We performed PCR focus on hepatic viruses in more detail, herpes simplex virus, Epstein-Barr virus, um, cytomegalovirus, and a human herpes virus 6. Then PCR focus on 
enteroviruses, adenoviruses, and parvovirus P19. We also done electron microscopy, which uh, found out the positivity of viruses in approximately two thirds of study population. PCR or electron microscopy positive, it, uh, positive for Borrelia burgdorferi was present in 70% of patients. Here is shown how were the results based on the method we used for analysis or based on the PCR detection and electron microscopy, but you can appreciate the most common viral agent in the myocardial biopsy was uh, herpetic, uh, herpetic virus. The second most common viruses were parvoviruses. The third most common enteroviruses, and only three individuals we detected adenoviruses by PCR. All these subjects were treated with conventional heart failure therapy as recommended by current ESG guidelines. And in some of them, we added on top of conventional heart failure therapy also specific treatment based on the endomyocardial biopsy finding. We found out uh, 22 patients with positivity of body laboratory in endomyocardial biopsy. They all were treated with conventional heart failure therapy, and on top, they got also cephalosporins of third generation intravenously for three weeks. And I would like to show you one year follow-up of these patients. In one year follow-up, we observed significant, significant decrease in diameters of the left ventricle, significant improvement in uh, ejection fraction of the left ventricle, decrease in volume of left atrium, decrease in severity of mitral regurg, improvement in right ventricular systolic performance, decrease in uh, pulmonary artery systolic pressure, and improvement in New York Heart Association classifications of improvement in heart failure symptomatology. In more detail, apart from one subject, we observed in all others, improvement in ejection fraction of the left ventricle and in many ways majority we also observed improvement uh, in symptomatology of heart failure. On the other hand, in five-year follow-up, when it compared the subgroup of patients with body over and the rest of the study cohort, the improvement of left ventricle ejection fraction and improvement in symptomatology of heart failure was very similar. I would like to share with you one patient who had clear benefit for, from treatment with antibiotics. It was a 35-year-old man coming to our coronary care unit because of severe heart failure and low cardiac output uh, who needed um, initially inotropic uh, medication um, when we um, found out a Borrelia and endovacal biopsy, we gave the patient uh, antibiotics intravenously and we observed significant improvement of the status of the patient. The patient had initially um, very low cardiac output, ejection fraction, uh, approximately 20%, a clotting in the apex of the left ventricle. And after several months of the treatment, we observed complete left ventricle systolic function recovery. We treated several patients with uh, viral presence in the myocardial biopsy with direct antiviral therapy like acyclovir or acyclovir. In all of them, we observed some improvement in injection fraction of the left ventricle and symptomatology of heart failure. On the, on, on the other hand, only in this subject, we observed complete left ventricle systolic function. Our recovery it was 46-year-old man with the presence of herpes simplex virus type 1 in endomarcata biopsy treated with uh, acyclovir. We treated also 10 patients with uh, combined immunosuppression. These patients uh, obtained prednisone and azathioprine for several months and in all of the patients, we observe some improvement in uh, ejection fraction of the left ventricle. On the other hand, in none of these subjects, we uh, re uh, recognize or observe complete left ventricle 
uh, systolic function recovery. Um, regarding the left ventricle ejection fraction and 5 year follow up for the entire study cohort, in majority of the study subjects, we observe significant improvement of left ventricle ejection fraction. The biggest improvement was usually seen during the first year. Mild, uh, mild improvement was typically seen also in the second year and in the following um, three years, it usually remained the ejection fraction stable or almost the same. Regarding the numbers, we observe uh, the improvement of ejection fraction above 35% in approximately one half of the patients or approximately one half of the patients had after five years of long follow-up ejection fraction more than 35, so above the cutoff value are usually used for implantation of uh, ICD. And in one quarter of the patients, we observe a complete left ventricle systolic function recovery as assessed by ejection fraction more than 50. In comparison, we so far published some studies the mortality was relatively low. The uh, mortality in the first year was 5%, in the second year it was 8%, and together in five years it was 17%. Neither the presence of myocardial inflammation nor the presence of virus or borrelia in the, in the myocardial biopsy predicted the uh, improvement of ejection fraction or mortality. So let me conclude, viral agents are present in myocardium in majority of patients with a recent onset unexplained DCM. Non-viral microbial agents such as Borrelia may play a role in the development of DCM. Inflammatory cardiomyopathy diagnosed by positivity of immunohistochemical criteria was present in less than one-fifth of our study cohort. And the myocardial biopsy clearly represents a method, um, useful method in comprehensive evaluation of patients with unexplained DCM. And based on our experience, current health therapy combined in some cases with specific endomyocardial biopsy based treatment leads in majority of patients uh, with recent onset unexplained DCM to significant left ventricle hit ejection fraction improvement and improved mortality. So before I finish, I would like to thank very much uh, all of our collaborators who participated in the study and all of you for uh, paying attention and listening to me and I'll be prepared for a live discussion.